tonight, I believe that the Lord has um, commissioned me to uh, speak a word that that um, may not be um, received by many. Um, and I know it's the Lord that's impressing upon me because I, I have a, a a sick stomach while I'm while I'm sitting here. Like my stomach feels very nervous, and anytime I have to give um, something that I know you know may not be received in the way that um, it's supposed to be received, or anytime I know I'm I'm saying something that may appear controversial, you know I'm 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 nervous, and because. It, it, it seems as though God always gives me things that are a controversial and a word for the body in which I'm a part of um, because of the backlash that comes with it, because of the, you know, opposition that comes from um, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I can honestly say that, you know, it causes me to not say everything because it appears as though you know all she does is fuss at the church and all she does is tell us what to do you know and tell us what we're doing wrong when she's a part of the body and um what better you know person to tell you or to speak about an issue that's going on um you know in the body than somebody that's a part of it and so when the word comes to you then the word comes to me too because I'm a part of the body of Christ. You know, we we the church, if we be honest, we don't like anyone to to address us or to deal with us or to show us where we're coming up short because we're prideful people. And uh, we don't like the world to point the finger at us. And then we don't like our own to tell us, you know, where we're missing it. But um, I have an obligation and, and I, I am learning. I can't say I'm fully there yet, but I am learning every day how to become at peace with what my assignment is. And I, I realize that my assignment is to speak on behalf of God to those that are supposed to represent him. You know, so I'm a voice that is called to touch the world, but God gives me instructions for the body. And um, I can't muzzle it or be quiet or, you know, sit back and be afraid because I know my counterparts are going to become offended. And so um, tonight, God has given me a word concerning what is going on during our time. Good to see you, Chris. Just pray for me, babe. Um, doing, going on during this time and our responsibility as the church. And I um, want you to know that the church has always been called to be the answer. The church has always been called to be the solution. Um, we, 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 the church, we, the body were always called to be, um, the world changers. We, we, it's always been in the mind of God It's always been in the heart of God for us to be the trendsetters for us to be the ones that have a word that will calm the broken and the bruised and the battered. We, we were the ones because we serve a creative God and because we're supposed to be at one with him, then because we're in relationship with him, then he gives us the download. He gives us the strategies. He shows us the resources. He tells us how to strategically go out and be who we're called to be. The problem in the world today and in our nation is the church is not doing what we're supposed to do. And we are putting the responsibility on those who were never, who were never qualified, who were never called to do our job. And so as I, you know, pondered on this word and as God uh, began to just reveal to me where we're missing it, um, what God gave me is, Siobhan, you're, 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 you, what you all are doing, you're, you're making noise, but you're not making a difference. All you're, all you're doing is making noise, but you're not making 
a difference. And, and this is not for everybody. So if you are making the difference, if you're doing what God has called you to do, then this word is not for you. But there are some of us that are hiding behind the our religious uh, duty. We're hiding behind our church services. We're hiding behind our prayer meetings. We're hiding behind being spiritual. And we are not engaging where we're supposed to engage. And that is on the front line where the problem is. I was watching a live uh, the other day and, and I was watching, it was a protest that was going on in a city. And uh, during the protest, there was a preacher that, you know, had an opportunity to get the microphone and have words. And this preacher got up and he was just talking all the, the, the church cliches. And he was saying all the, 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 the church lingo and he even invited the people to come to his church while the the the, the crowd is full of anger and the crowd is full of hurt and the crowd is confused and they don't know what to do and they feel that you know we we as a people are, are being mistreated and and we've been having to fight you know for our equal rights for forever and so this crowd is looking for some word that will calm them, that will give them some type of hope. And, and this preacher is up there inviting them to his church and he's giving all the church lingo and the church, you know, talk and, and, and they're lashing back at him and they're yelling and they're saying, we don't want to hear from another preacher. This crowd of protesters, our people were yelling back at this preacher who was a pastor and they're telling him, we don't want to hear another preacher because y'all not doing nothing. Where are y'all at when we need you? Again, this ain't for everybody. I'm talking to the ones that this applies to. If the shoe fits, come on y'all, we've got to wear it and tie up the shoestrings. They said, we do not want to hear another preacher. We don't want to hear nothing about church. We want to know who's going to come out here and make a difference. And then I'm looking at my timeline and I'm seeing church people saying, we ain't going out there to protest. It's too much going out there. It's, it's too much danger out there. We're going to stay here and we're going to pray. I want you to know, church, that your prayers is not enough. When Jesus got up off of his knees from asking God to remove the cup from him. And then when he realized that the cup couldn't be removed, guess what? He said, you know what, God? All right. You're not going to stop me from fulfilling this assignment, even though it hurts, even though that means my life is going to be taken away. It's not about me. It's not my will. But God. Your will be done. And he got up off his knees and he went to do the will of his father. Stop saying that you're praying and fasting and that's all you need to do because you are not following the example of Jesus Christ. You are hiding behind your religious obligation because you're scared. And we don't need another preacher. Don't y'all see what's going on? Don't y'all see the hair right on the wall? The Lord has allowed uh, during this season of the of COVID, He's allowed the churches to have to shut down so that we can finally be the church. And because we're so stuck and we're so prideful, we're still trying to make our way back into the church building. And God is saying, I need you all to take me to where the people are. Let's go to the word, Mark, the 10th chapter. If some of you all are mad, it's okay. It's okay. Mark, the 10th chapter. I want you all to see something. I want to start at the 35th verse. At the 35th verse. Are y'all with me? Share it. Share it. Share it. I'm already prepared for what's going to come. 
I put a post up Sunday because it was Pentecost Sunday. Oh, why did I, why did I even mess with that 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 sacred uh sacred lamb? Why did I, why did I even touch Pentecost Sunday? And I said, uh, preachers, not only is it your responsibility to preach a word in due season, but as a prophet of the Lord, it is your responsibility to give language to what's going on in the times. Don't be so stuck up on your Pentecost message that you missed the moment to speak on behalf of God and preachers inbox me because they were offended by what I posted because we are so set in doing it our way and we're putting God's name uh, we're attaching this is God's will and this is what God wants us to wants us to do and God is saying I'm not even in that I'm not even there Mark the 10th chapter. I want you all to see where we are. I want you all to see something. Mark the 10th chapter. Start at the 35th verse. 35th verse. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Okay. 35th verse. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they came unto him and they said, Master, what what would we do? Uh, No, Master, we would that thou should... Do for us whatever we desire. And Jesus asked his disciples. He said, Sierra, I'm going to call you. I love you, baby. Jesus asked his disciples, those that walk with him, James and John. He said, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to Jesus, grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. And Jesus said unto them, you don't even know what you're asking for. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of? Can you be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said, yeah, we can do it, Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus said, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized with all, shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right and on my left is not even mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Verse 41. And when the 10 heard it, when the other 10 disciples heard it, they begin to be very displeased with James and John. And Jesus called them to him and he said, you know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles, they exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. But so shall it not be among you. Let me teach you a lesson. That whoever among you wants to be great, you have to first be a minister. Minister here did not mean be a preacher. But if you want to be considered as great in the kingdom, you have to be willing to be a servant. And whoever of you desires to be the chiefest, You shall be a servant of all. For now, let me give you this lesson. For the son of man, me, Jesus, I didn't come to be ministered unto, but I came to minister. I came that I may give my life as a ransom for many. James, John, y'all just heard Jesus in the prior chapters tell you all that he is getting ready to be crucified. He has given a very detailed account. He's given the prediction of what's going to happen and he's preparing those that walk with him, those that have seen him operate in signs and wonders. He's preparing them to let them know that I am not going to be with you always. And they have a nerve to ask him 
Well, look, can you just go ahead and guarantee us a seat on your right and left? Can we be a part of this glorification process? Because we see where you're going. That is the place where the body is. We are opportunists. We don't want to serve. We don't want to get our hands dirty. We don't want to drink up the cup. We don't want to be ostracized. We don't want to be persecuted. We don't want to get on the front line and people talk against us and call us names and spit on us. We don't want that. We want the hot seat. We want the hot seat. They desired to sit beside Jesus because they knew that Jesus was on his way to be glorified. They knew that there was elevation ahead and they were wanting to be attached to him so that whatever elevation he got, they got it too. Sidebar, get away from those that ain't willing to drink the cup of death with you. They ain't willing to die with you. They're not willing to sacrifice with you. They ain't willing to get in the trenches with you. Get out of a church that's not willing to get in the trenches and be the hands and feet of God. Stop sitting under passive, afraid leaders who are punks and not powerful. They sat, they wanted to see. And he's like, y'all are missing it. Y'all are totally missing what the real issue is. I didn't come to, 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 to be ministered to. And I'm the savior of the world. I am the king of kings. And I don't desire for man to put me up and to exalt me. My exaltation came only because I was willing to be crucified. How many of us are willing to go out there and risk our lives? What we're missing, we're missing men that were willing to give up their life for the cause. We are missing women who are willing to give up their life for the cause. Your praying ain't enough. Your prophesying ain't enough. Get out there and protest with purpose. Your voice, our voice needs to be heard where it matters. Where are the voices now that people respect? That's what we're void of. We had, we didn't have it, but our generations prior, our forefathers, they had the voice of Dr. King. They had the voice of Malcolm X, even though Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King wanted to solve the issue in a different way. There were still voices that people stood and listened to. Where are the preachers that have a voice outside the church walls? We big and bad in our church, but who knows who we are in the community? Who knows who we are at the city council hall? Who knows who we are in the White House? Who knows other pastors than the ones we know? Other preachers. America knows Bishop Jakes. America knows a few others. But where are the other? There's a church on every corner. Do they know who we are? Do the movers and shakers know who we are? They don't know why, because we just want the seat at the right and the left. We want to be uh, uh, kings and queens in the church. We don't want to serve. We don't want to get our hands dirty. We don't want to get out there and, 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 and really meet the needs of the people. My son said to me, mom, I want to go out and protest. I want to go and capture pictures. I want to be a part of history. And I said, no, we ain't going. Uh-uh, we ain't going out there. You know why? Because I was scared. I was scared to go. And I was scared for him to go. Scared? Come on, Pastor Sellers. You talk all that junk. You talking all that trash. You're scared? You better get yourself out there and be who you're supposed to be. And I told him no at first. 
Because I said, no, it's going to be too much going on. And anything could happen. And immediately I had to check myself. I said, Siobhan, you better get yourself out there on that front line. You better get out there and be an example. You better get out there in your community and show them that you ain't just concerned about the people in church, but you feel the same hurt and the same pain that they do. You better get out there and holler just like they hollering. And while you're doing it, plead the blood of Jesus. Pray while you're doing it. I ain't going out there to protest. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not saying nothing. I, 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 I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to fill out the census. You know, I, that ain't, that ain't for me. The spiritual people, we're supposed to just be on the wall praying. You're powerless. Wherever Jesus went, he made a difference. And guess what? He went where the trouble was. He didn't stay in the temple. God closed our churches and y'all fighting to get back in them. Because that's the only place you feel relevant is in your pulpit. Because outside, you're nowhere. Your co-workers don't even respect you. Your family don't even respect you. You're only powerful in your pulpit. We should be ashamed of ourselves. James and John, y'all follow him this close and you don't pick up his spirit. I can't give you that. That ain't even mine to give you. That's my father's to give to whoever he desires. You gonna roll with me? You gotta be willing to drink of the cup of death. You gotta be willing to understand that I'm the son of man and I don't have nowhere to lay my head. This walk ain't no plush, lavish walk. I'm not going to be liked. I'm not going to be understood. There'll be places I go and that I'm going to have to shake the dust off my feet. There'll be places I go, they got a hit on my life. They don't like me because I disrupt systems. That's how it's supposed to be for us. They should know that when we show up, we're coming to disrupt systems. We're coming to shift things. We're coming to bring about revolution and revival. Acts 3. And I'm almost done. Acts 3. Acts 3. Go with me. Go with me. Acts 3. Acts 3. I want y'all to see this. Everywhere Jesus went, he made a difference. Everywhere we go, we're supposed to make a difference. What good is it to preach good sermons? What good is it to spend all our time in church week after week and nobody's life is transformed because of our life? What good is our Facebook lives? What good is it? Conferences, crusades, prayer meetings, cyber church. What good is it if we're not going to after we release the word and after we, you know, give all the praises to God. What good is it if we don't go then and walk out that which we're preaching and teaching and singing about? Acts the third chapter and I preach this message all the time. And I realized because it's my burden. They were in the church praying. It was their custom. They prayed three times a day. Peter and John, they're on their way to pray. This is Acts 3. After the early church spent time with each other. As a matter of fact, let me show y'all something real quick. Let me talk to you about the early church. Go to Acts 2. Go to Acts 2. The early practices of the church. The Bible says, verse 42. Somebody type it in for me. Acts 2, 42. That the early church, this was their practice. They continued steadfastly in the doctrine, the apostles' doctrine. They continued feeding their spirit the word of God. 
They continued fellowshipping and breaking the bread because they were strengthening each other. And when one was weak, the other one was strong. When one felt nervous, the other one was there to say, you know, oh, come on, come on, we got this. Come on, we're called to make a difference. Come on, we're called to, to turn the world upside down. They broke bread together. They, they stayed in the word of God. And the Bible says in verse 43, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Many signs and wonders. I, I, I'm inclined to believe that a lot of this prayer we doing is just, you know, babbling. Just, just, just again, just doing what we feel makes us feel spiritual. Just, just sending up a uh, sounding brass. Not, nothing, nothing behind it. No weight on it. No glory on it. And no results with it. They continue steadfast in the word. They continue steadfast in their time in the word of God. The word empowered them. And because they were empowered by the word of God, they begin to operate in signs and wonders. And all that believed were together and they had all things common. If the church, us, can get on the same page, I promise you we'll see things turn in the world. We'll see things turn in our nation. Go back to the prayer. Jesus prayed, Lord, make them one. Make them one, God, like me and you are one. Can you please unite them? So the world can believe that you sent me. There's our answer. There's our answer. You want to know how uh, uh, racial injustice and, and all the things that's going on in the world, how it's going to change, how it's going to turn once we become united and we exemplify and we demonstrate the same picture that Jesus and his father demonstrates to us. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three have a different function, but they all operate as one. Lord, make them one. Make them one, please. Just like me and you are one. Somebody find that for me. Somebody find it for me. Lord, make them one. So the world will believe that you sent me. The world don't believe in our God because we are not unified. Because we don't speak the same language. The world shows us more unity than we do. Well, you're not showing unity because look how you're talking about the church. I'm not buying it. And y'all are going to make me feel bad at all for what I'm saying tonight. I don't know who called the blackout Tuesday. I don't think it was a church person or I don't think it was a preacher or a leader in the church. I don't know who called it. Somebody said the music industry. Somebody said it was two, um, you know, black business owners. I don't know. And then there's talk that, you know, we've misinterpreted and it didn't mean for us to do what we've done. It didn't mean for us to get off social media. We should still be talking. And many of us did the blackout on Instagram and the church is fussing. Why would y'all get up there and do the blackout? Didn't no saint call that. Ain't no preacher call that. Why y'all? Guess what? Whoever it was at least had enough sense to try to unite us. We didn't come up with the idea. And we should have. We're the answers. We're the trailblazers. We're supposed to set the course. Why didn't we come up with it? And even if we came up with it, what influence do we have that people would listen to us? I can call a blackout. I'm not going to have the whole nation respond because the whole nation don't know me. You, some of y'all can call a blackout, but guess what? We ain't got the influence because our influence is in the church. Acts, the second chapter. So they believed together, they sold their possessions and goods, and they split them. They parted them to every man that had a need. And they continued daily with one accord 
in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate with single, they ate and they were with gladness and of one accord, singleness of heart, praising God, having favor and the Lord added to the church daily. And now we go to Acts 3 because they're already empowered to do work. They spent time together. They spent time in communion. They've prayed. They've sang. They've ate. And after they got done spending time, now it's time to go and be about our father's business. So now Acts 3, you have a man that has a need. You have a man that's sitting outside the church. They're inside. The rest of the folks, the saints, is inside the church doing what their custom is. They're having their prayer meeting. And they're praying three times a day. Peter and John, full of the Holy Ghost, ready now to walk it out, ready to be the hands and feet of God, ready to be the church. See, this man has a need. The man asks for money. They say, no, we ain't got no money, sir. But what we have is the power of God. And once we give you this, your life will be changed forever. And they took him by the right hand. They commanded him to rise up. Immediately, he's delivered. He's set free. And guess what? This man is so excited about what God did for him. And he runs inside the church where the saints are, where the prayer warriors are, where the intercessors are. And when they saw this man that was lame, couldn't walk for over 40 years, when they saw this man praising God and happy, they were in amazement. That's where we are. They're making noise while Peter and John is making the difference. They're making noise in the sanctuary. But Peter and John were the ones that made the difference. And you can tell it was only noise because when the miracle took place, they couldn't believe it. They didn't even believe in the God they were praying to. And y'all pray all day long. After you get done praying, it's time to put those prayers to work. After we remain persistent in prayer, now it's time to produce something. Don't get so wrapped into the hurt and the pain of what's going on that we miss the point. This continues on because we're not doing our job. And we can rehearse and talk about the pain of it all day. But we're missing the point behind it. God is speaking in this. All of this that's going on. God is allowing it because he's telling us something. I am putting fire under you all's feet to represent me the right way. Y'all big and bad in your church sanctuaries. You big on Facebook. Be big at the White House. Be big at the table where the changes are being made. Be big at the polls. I am guilty. I didn't even want to vote. I ain't going to be a part of that. I ain't, I ain't Republican or Democrat. I, I ain't going to be no part of that. Stupid. You so spiritual minded. You ain't got no earthly sense. How are you going to be a world changer and a city changer and a nation changer and you don't want to go and vote? You don't even know who's running. I'm talking good. You don't even know where to go vote at. That ain't for us. We ain't supposed to be a part of that. You live in America. You're a citizen. Before you, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a prophet. I'm a, yeah. But you're also an American citizen that benefits from being in America. You got to go and make a difference. Me too. Me too. So I'm not just talking to you. The word came to me first. Figure out, Siobhan, how to get a voice at the table that matters. If you've got to start in your neighborhood, start there. If you've got to start in, your, in the city council, start there. 
If you've got to get in there and run for office because you got influence in your city, start there. I didn't do it in Virginia, but the next place I'm going to, I promise you, I'm going to find out what's going on and I'm going to make some noise. I will not hide behind the church. I will not hide behind a title. I will not hide behind noonday prayers and Facebook lives and cyber church. After we get done, get out there on the front line and make something happen. This is what I believe God has placed on our heart to release to his children. He may not have given it to me to release so loud, but I believe it's his heart tonight. And I pray that you have received this in love, but I pray that it's, it's made you feel like, man, I got to do more. I got to do better. Man, she, you know, it, it's right. It's right. We got to see the bigger picture here. Running back to your church. And the people are hurting in the community. Where are they going to get the answers from if we don't give it to them? Where, where, how will they know that they don't have to riot to get attention? That they don't really have to protest in this kind of way if we don't tell them? If we don't get out there with them, y'all watching the news, just rocking back and forth, talking about we praying. Shame on you. Shame on you. Follow Jesus' life. He didn't sit back and stay away. He always went to where trouble was. And everywhere he went, he made a difference. Let's pray. God, I thank you tonight. For these that you have drawn on this live. I thank you for those that only came even just to be nosy. But they heard the word. I thank you for those that came just to see what I was going to say. So that they can come up with a combat. But they heard your word. And I thank you God. That you will leave us without an excuse. Because you have given us what our mission, what our duty is as Christians, as the church. God, I thank you that you are bringing us back into proper alignment with what we're really called to do. And that is to transform lives. You've called us to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are abused to those who are mishandled, to those, God, who have been mistreated, to those who are battered, to those who are shattered, to those who have been treated unjustly. God, you've called us to that place. You've called us to that people. You've called us to that work. You've called us to be your vessels. You've called us to be the living epistles. Hallelujah. You've called us to be God, not just hearers of your word, but you've called us to be doers of your word. Forgive us, God, for being so religious, for being so stuck in doing it our way that we fail to do it your way. Forgive us, God, for doing it our way. That we've neglected your will. God help us. To be the transformers. That you have called us to be. To walk in that same power that you walked in. To walk in that same authority that your apostles walked in. That, 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 that people could even be healed by our shadow. By our presence. That we will be able to give a word in due season. That will set captives free. That our words, God, will be the, uh, the tongue of the learned. That we'll be able to sit at tables with the intellectuals. And we'll still be able to sit at tables with those who may not be as intellectual. Hallelujah. That we'll have 
influence God, that we'll have the ear of the man that's at the top of the chain, as well as the man that may be at the bottom of the chain, that we'll have the heart for mankind as a whole, not just the people that we benefit from, but that we'll have your heart that loves everybody, the heart that wishes no one would perish. The heart that's willing to go after the one. If that means leaving the 99. God, give us your heart tonight. Give us your heart tonight. Turn our hearts, God, that's turned cold. That's hard. That's like stone. Turn our hearts back to a place where we hurt when you hurt. Where we grieve when you grieve. Bring our hearts back to the place where, God, we're at one with you. Hallelujah. Where we love what you love. Hallelujah. Give us the strength, God, to go against the grain if we have to. Give us the strength to stand if we've got to stand by ourselves. Give us the wisdom. Give us the strategy. Give us the blueprint. Give us the how to make the difference. God, we don't know, but you know, we don't have the answers, but you do. And because you do, you give it to us and then we can go and be the problem solvers. We can go and be the solution. We can be the glory carriers. We can be the ones that make the difference. Forgive us for just making noise. And not for making a difference. Thank you, oh God. That even with what's going on in our nation. You're setting the stage for revival to break forth. And that revival starts with us. That revival starts with us. I thank you, oh God, that every time there was a revival. Right before the revival, there was a revolution. There was an outbreak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I thank you, oh God, that the world will bow to you, that our nation will bow and surrender and seek you, that pride will be broken. Hallelujah. That you will get our attention and that we will seek you like never before. Hallelujah. Help the leaders that you've called, God, to lead justly, to lead righteously, to lead with power and authority. Give your leaders, God, backbone. Hallelujah. Make them wise warriors. Make us wise warriors. Make us powerful prophets. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you for these that you've allowed to be arrested tonight to listen to that which you've given to me. And I pray that they've been edified. I pray that they've been challenged to come up higher. I pray, God, that there's been a tug on their hearts to do more. And God, if I misrepresented you and said it in a way that did not, God, exemplify your heart, forgive me. I want to do it your way. I don't want to make you look bad. And so I pray that I did what was pleasing in your sight tonight. And I thank you for covering me. Hallelujah. Covering my family. Covering God, my children. Cover these your children. As they go out on the front line and make a difference, God. Keep them safe. Keep them protected. Undergird them. Provide the resources that they need. Order their steps. Show them where the resources are. Show them who to align themselves with. Give them a seat at the table to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you all. If you want to sow, you can. Um, whatever God lays on your heart. And if you don't, it's okay too. I pray that you receive this word. I'm looking to see you guys again on next Monday. 
And for those that have signed up for the cyber class, I'll see you on Thursday. And if you want to be on, not cyber class, master class, if you want to be a part of that, tonight is your last night to sign up. You guys be blessed. Have a good night.